I'm going to make your game go from looking like this to looking like this. Here is a side by side comparison of the before and after on the new fortunes keep map. Do take note of the FPS difference. We'll be starting off in the Nvidia control panel. If you don't know how to open up your Nvidia control panel, just right click your desktop and click on Nvidia control panel. It should bring you to this screen here. And what you're going to want to do is check this middle box right here where it says use the advanced 3D image settings. From there, you are going to click on manage 3D settings on the left side. And then I'm going to scroll through all of these and you are just going to copy all of these settings. So feel free to pause the video or rewind as needed. Once you are finished with that, we're going to click on change resolution here on the left side and double check that the refresh rate of your monitor is set correctly. Some of you may be on a high refresh rate monitor wondering why it only says 60 hertz here and you can't change it. Well, that's most likely because you're scrolled up which I don't have the option here and it's under like ultra HD resolution or something so what you're going to want to do is scroll down and find where it says PC select correct resolution of your monitor and then you should be able to change the refresh rate from there scrolling down we are going to make sure that use Nvidia color settings is selected here and then under output dynamic range you're going to want to make sure this is set to full most monitors are going to have a color depth of 8 BPC some of you might have the option for a higher number. If you do have an option for a higher number, make sure you select that here and then don't forget to apply your changes. From there, we will be clicking on adjust desktop color settings on the left side. And this is arguably the most important part of this video when it comes to visibility and spotting enemies. I no longer use Nvidia filters and I recommend that you guys don't use Nvidia filters as well because they just kill your FPS and it's just not worth it when you can get something that looks similar using these settings here that won't have any effect on your FPS. So for the brightness here, you're going to want to switch this to 55. For the contrast, we are going to be putting this up to 65. The gamma, we are going to be putting up to 1.2. And don't forget, you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to fine tune it. And then for digital vibrance, we are going to put this up to 80%. The only issue with using these color settings is that it's going to make your desktop always look like this and I don't want my desktop to look this super oversaturated and like contrasty when I'm just watching YouTube videos or playing other games or whatnot so this is one of those things where you're gonna have to change it every time before you open your game unless you don't mind your desktop looking like this all the time now in the adjust desktop size and position tab you are going to want to make sure your monitor is selected here and then under scaling select no scaling and then down here just double check that your refresh rate and resolution is set correctly still if you are playing some other games and you happen to notice that your game doesn't completely full screen just come back here and switch this to aspect ratio or full screen and one of those should fix it for you we are now clicked on the adjust video color settings tab over here on the left and what you're going to want to do here is just select with nvidia settings here click on advanced and then switch this dynamic range from limited to full and i know some of you out there might be using G-Sync, so I'll cover that quickly. If you do want to use G-Sync, obviously you have it enabled here. Personally, I don't use G-Sync because I know it adds a little bit of input lag, but whether that's noticeable or not is it's debatable. If you do enable this, make sure you go back into your Manage 3D settings. And then you're going to find max frame rate right here. And you're going to want to switch this to on. And you're going to want to put this number here to three below whatever the refresh rate of your monitor is. So if you got a 144 hertz monitor, put this to 141. If you have a 240 hertz monitor, put this to 237 and so on. If you don't use G-Sync, just completely ignore this. You don't want to limit your FPS. Now we're going to be going over some Windows settings. So for the first thing I want you guys to do is open up Google Chrome. If you do use Google Chrome. If you don't, just skip this step. In the top right, you are going to see the three little dots. So click on that and then you're going to want to click on settings. On the left side here, you are going to see it says advanced. So click on that drop down box and then click on system. 
And then you're going to see this option right here where it says continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed. So make sure you check that off. Otherwise, Google Chrome is going to be running in the background at all times after it is closed. And that is going to be eating up resources, which we don't want because that affects performance. Speaking of things running in the background, the next thing we're going to want to do is go to the search bar on Windows and you're just going to type in background and you're going to see it says background apps right here. So we're going to click on that and then you're just going to want to check this off at the top where it says let apps run in the background for the same reason we did with Google Chrome. This next step is only for my mouse and keyboard players. If you play mouse and keyboard on any game though, do make sure that you change this setting. So you're going to go to your search bar and just type in mouse and you're going to see it says mouse settings right there. Once opened up, you're going to want to click on additional mouse options here on the right side and it'll bring up this little menu here. So you're going to want to click on pointer options at at the top and then where it says enhance pointer precision here you're going to want to uncheck this enhance pointer precision is mouse acceleration which can affect your muscle memory in game and just make it harder to aim now i know that warzone uses your raw mouse input but this is something i think anyone should check off if you play mouse in keyboard on any other game as it can affect your aim in those games going back to the search bar again we're going to be typing in power and you're going to see power and sleep settings here at the top so click on that and it'll bring up this menu here and from here on the right side you'll be clicking on additional power settings and it'll bring up another menu where you can choose your preferred plan now you're going to want to do high performance here and if you don't see it it might be hidden under the show additional plans if you have something that says something along the lines of ultra performance do make sure you check that one instead next you're going to want to go to your search bar again and you are going to type in game mode and and you'll see it says game mode settings here so click on that and it'll bring up this menu here now on the left side you're going to want to click on xbox game bar and you're going to want to check this off here at the top now if you do need the xbox game bar for whatever reason just don't turn it off obviously but it can affect your performance so we do want this off and then we'll go back to the left side here where it says game mode make sure game mode is turned on and then on the right side here you'll see it says graphic settings click on that and we're going to check this on where it says hardware accelerated gpu scheduling now if you do stream or you record videos or whatnot on the same pc you are gaming on you do not want to turn this on as it can have some issues with your recordings and streams or whatnot so do keep that in mind but you will now have to restart your pc so once you are done watching this video just don't forget to reset your pc for the in-game settings we're going to be starting here in the graphics tab under display and as always i recommend you guys play in full screen mode for the least amount of input lag and the most fps possible under screen refresh rate just double check that your correct refresh rate is selected here and that your render resolution is set to 100 dynamic resolution we want this disabled aspect ratio we want this on automatic sync every frame otherwise known as vsync we want this disabled if you're having a lot of screen tearing and stuff yes vsync can fix it but vsync also adds noticeable input lag which you do not want in a first person shooter now for your custom frame rate limit here's what i would do i would put this to custom and then click on the advanced tab here and i would put the gameplay custom frame rate limit all the way up to max and then put the menu and out of focus custom frame rate limit to 60. if you just set this to unlimited your computer is just going to be running at its full potential at all times when the game is open this kind of gives the computer a little bit of a break when you're in the menus waiting for a game now brightness should be pretty self-explanatory you just follow this little chart thingy on the right side just adjust your brightness until the logo in the middle is barely visible display gamma we want this at 2.2 if you are playing on a actual tv you could put this on 2.4 but i think most of us who are playing on pc are using monitors nvidia highlights we do want this disabled if you enable it nvidia is just going to be recording a bunch of random stuff and that's going to eat up space on your computer and then nvidia reflex low latency we do want this enabled moving on over to the quality tab and yes this will pop up don't forget to apply your changes we're going to start at the top here with field of view i personally use 120 and i recommend you get used to using 120 as it's going to give you the biggest advantage in game from there you're going to want to click on advance and switch your ads field of view to affected if you ever watch the big streamers and it looks like they have zero recoil that is because of this setting 
lighting combined with the field of view being at 120. Camera movement, you want this on least. You don't want your camera shaking around an insane amount when you're in the game. That's just distracting, and I don't think anyone wants that. Streaming quality, we are going to put this on normal. This is just going to make the game look a little bit better. And then texture resolution. I have a comparison here of texture resolution on both low and high. And as you can see, there's actually not a huge difference in FPS and texture resolution on high looks noticeably better. So I do recommend setting texture resolution to high, but if you just don't care how the game looks and you want the most FPS possible, then you could put this on low. Keep in mind, if you do have a lower end system that switching this from low to high could affect your performance a lot more than it did for me. So if your FPS still isn't where you want it to be after this video, is over definitely try putting this on low texture filter and isotropic i used to recommend you guys put this on high but i've noticed at least on fortune's keep that the difference between low and high as shown here isn't really noticeable at all i actually can't even spot a difference and you do get a couple more fps by putting this on low so i would recommend that everyone sets this setting to low now for particle quality we are going to want this on high for bullet impacts and spray I want this enabled so I can see my sprays in the game and it's just nice seeing the bullet holes I guess. Tessellation, we do want this disabled. Dismemberment and gore effects, I'm keeping enabled for the same reasons I kept bullet impacts and sprays enabled. On-demand texture streaming is something we want disabled again. Now if you turn this on, the game might look a little better but the thing with turning this on is that the game's going to be constantly downloading textures to your computer while you're playing the game, which obviously will hurt your performance and could make you lag if you're constantly downloading textures in the background. Filmic strength, we're going to want to set this all the way up to one. Film grain, we want this turned all the way to zero. I haven't noticed that film grain does anything in the actual game. It looks like it only works in the menu. NVIDIA DLSS, now I would recommend not using this because when you put DLSS on it almost looks like the game just smeared Vaseline all over your monitor and it hurts visibility a lot but if you have a lower end system and you're not getting a lot of FPS you could try turning this to balanced or quality but personally I think it's worth it to run the game at lower FPS and have better visibility I feel like that's more important in a battle royale game now anti-aliasing I highly recommend you guys play with with this off i know a lot of people don't like having anti-aliasing off but it affects your visibility a lot if you turn this on not only your visibility it really impacts your fps now if we look at this side by side comparison here i mean first of all you notice a huge difference in fps but also at long range in the distance you can notice that the game looks kind of smeared almost and almost a little blurry so this is gonna affect your visibility just immensely at long range which is why i highly recommend you guys turn this off and get used to it the only thing that is annoying as you can see here with anti-aliasing off is that you do kind of get a shimmering effect in the trees and the edges of a lot of things kind of look jagged but it is a trade-off that is worth it depth of field here we want this disabled world motion blur and weapon motion blur we want all of this disabled we don't want to be adding any sort of blur to the game because that's just affecting our visibility a lot and then shadow map resolution i actually still have this on high here from when i was testing it i do recommend putting this on low i've seen so many people in my comment section telling me that shadow map resolution on high actually gives you better fps and i'm just gonna let you guys know that you're wrong i literally just tested it here is the comparison here for those who don't believe me we have low on the left and then high on the right and as you can see shadow map resolution on low clearly gives you more fps i do understand though that having shadows on low can look kind of ugly and some of you may not like that so if you don't care about losing some fps you could put this on high but i would recommend putting this on low if this video is helping you out so far please consider dropping a like 
like and leaving a comment down below that helps me out a lot and consider subscribing if you're new here i'd really appreciate that and i do stream all the time on twitch link will be in the description cash spot shadows and cash sun shadows we want both of these enabled particle lighting we want this on low ray tracing we want this disabled i believe this only works in the campaign anyways but we're just going to be keeping it disabled just in case and then ambient occlusion and screen space reflection we want both of these disabled moving on to the interface tab here now some of you might be wondering how people's like hud looks a little squished in in the game and that is this setting here the horizontal and vertical heads up display bounds i play on a 27 inch monitor so having the normal hud settings where it's just all the way to the edges of the screen kind of makes it hard to see the mini map when there's uavs up and stuff like that because i basically have to turn my whole head to look up at the top left hand corner of my screen which is why i put this down to 25 and then i recommend using the square mini map shape as it gives you more visibility of the mini map you can literally see more when you put it on square which is very very helpful when you have uavs up and whatnot and then if we scroll down here if you are curious as to see how to see your frames or whatever you just enable it down here under system which is where you can also enable your server latency and packet loss gpu temperature any sort of settings like that you want displayed up in the top left hand corner of your game will be found here also one little tip that people don't know is down here is that there's a skip introduction movie which you can enable so you don't have to see that annoying introduction movie every time you open the game moving on to the audio tab here we have tested all the different audio mixes and boost low does produce the loudest footstep audio if you want to see a full video of the audio settings where we went over all that link will be in the description now i recommend using master volume at 100 and then using something like sound lock so it doesn't blow, blow your eardrums out if you need to know how to set that up that video will also be linked in the description music volume we want this all the way down we don't want music in our ears while we're trying to sound horror and listen for footsteps or whatnot and then dialogue volume i put this at 30 now you can put this anywhere between like 25 and 50 you don't want the dialogue volume to be too loud where it's covering up the audio of important cues like gunshots or footsteps but you also don't want it too quiet where you can't hear if an enemy calls in a uav or if an enemy's flying in and then effects volume we have this at 100 percent gunshots and footsteps and all that falls under the effects volume category and then cinematics volume is for those cutscenes when you first open up the game when a new season comes out or whatever if you don't turn this down at all your eardrums are going to get blown out when you first open the game during a new season mono audio here is something you really really want disabled because if you have this enabled you might hear footsteps coming from your right but it just sounds like it's coming from like everywhere because mono audio is not playing the audio through your left or right like stereo would it's basically playing all the audio in your headset uniformly what that means is if there's footsteps coming from your left normally you would hear that in your left ear but if mono audio is enabled you're going to hear those footsteps in both headphones and you're not going to be able to tell where it is coming from and then scrolling down the rest of the audio settings here are pretty personal preference but here is all my settings that i use i won't be going over controller settings because i don't feel i'm qualified enough to be going over controller settings but i have been using controller a little bit to figure all these settings out and oh my god i'm terrible with the controller now but if you want to see me use a controller at all and try out these settings live link will be in the description i stream a lot on twitch for the keyboard and mouse settings i do play on 800 dpi and currently i am playing on five sensitivity which has been feeling a little fast for me i'll be honest i change my sensitivity all the time even though i know it's terrible for me and my muscle memory but i just like messing with settings a little tip for the mouse and keyboard players out there if you click advanced here under the mouse sensitivity you'll see helicopter sensitivity airplane basic and airplane advanced sensitivity multipliers if your sensitivity feels way too slow when you're trying to turn a helicopter or a plane in the sky like you're just swiping your mouse all over the place this can help cranking all three of these settings 
planes all the way up. Do keep in mind though that if you hop in a turret in one of those helicopters, your sensitivity will just feel extremely fast. For ADS sensitivity mode, I prefer using relative. You can switch it to legacy if you want your ADS sense to be the exact same sensitivity as your hip fire sense. But this can make your sensitivity feel just way, way too slow when you're ADS with high zoom optics. Whereas with relative, your sensitivity is going to feel the exact same no matter what zoom level you're at, no matter what optic you're using, whether you're hip firing or not. I'll just scroll down to the end here so you can see the rest of my settings and mouse acceleration, filtering, and smoothing. Make sure these are all the way down at zero and disabled. Moving on to the movement tab here, you want your slide behavior on tap. That's going to make it a lot easier to slide cancel. Switching your automatic sprint to automatic tactical sprint is going to make your movement so much better once you do get used to it. And I highly, highly recommend switching to it. You're just going to become a better player overall once you do get the hang of using this. Now, keybinds are personal preference, but if you're new to PC and looking for some keybinds, I guess you could start with these. These are what I personally use. Now, what works for me might not work for you. Under weapons and equipment here, a big one is armor plate behavior right here. You want to switch this to apply all. So you only got to click your armor plate button once and it'll just keep applying plates until you cancel it. And then scrolling down here, we do have all of my key binds for my weapons and equipment. Again, this is personal preference, but you can use this as a reference if you're new to keyboard and mouse. Under kill streaks and vehicles, this is all just key binds. And like I said, this is just all personal preference. So you can use these as a reference or if you just want to see what I use. Same same thing with overlays and shortcuts. I am just going to go over for all of these keybinds for you guys just because people do ask sometimes. But if this video did help you out at all, please consider dropping a like and leaving a comment down below. Also, subscribe if you're new here. I'd really appreciate that. We upload these settings videos every single new season as well as a lot of other videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Here's the web. Peace.